Hello everyone, so this video is going to be about intracranial hemorrhages. We have four of them. We will start by understanding the layers that surround the cerebral cortex. From outside in, we have dura, arachnoid and pia. The space between dura and the endosteal layer of the skull is epidural space and here occurs the epidural hemorrhage and the, or the extradural hemorrhage. The vessel implicated is middle meningeal artery. The space between the dura and the arachnoid is the subdural space and the vessel implicated for this hemorrhage is the bridging vein that goes from outside in and from inside to out. The space between arachnoid and pia is the subarachnoid space where the CSF flows and the hemorrhage occurring here is the subarachnoid hemorrhage. Anterior comminuting veins are involved in subarachnoid hemorrhage. An intracerebral hemorrhage occurring inside the parenchyma of the cerebral cortex also known as intraparenchymal hemorrhage and middle cerebral artery is here involved. So we will start our discussion first by understanding the extradural hemorrhage. Exclusively traumatic hemorrhage means an extradural hemorrhage occurs by trauma only and it is characterized by a lucid interval. A lucid interval is though non-specific but seen in case of extradural hemorrhage, acid interval is a period of consciousness in between the periods of unconsciousness. In a CT, we see as you see in this image a biconvex hematoma, okay, a biconvex hematoma. A 100 cc of biconvex hematoma is going to be fatal in case of extradural hemorrhage. Now the indication for surgery in case of extradural hemorrhage is more than 30 cc of clot size, more than 5 mm of midline shift and more than 1.5 cm thickness of this hematoma. We go for craniotomy or a burr hole drilling in the cranium to release the pressure. These were bits about EDH, we'll go into understanding of SDH, that is subdural hemorrhage. Subdural hemorrhage is seen in alcoholic old age or boxing people, that is known as punch drunk syndrome. Here we see a concave convex hematoma, you see in this CT image, okay, we see a concave convex hematoma. And this SDH is characterized after these episodes or trauma, there is gradually developing altered sensorium over weeks. So a old age person suffered a trauma and after a few weeks he will have an altered sensorium. A fatal uh, volume is 100 to 150 ml of this hematoma. Also here the indication for surgery are 1 cm thickness of this concave convex hematoma and a 5 mm of midline shift. Talking about the most common of this intracranial hemorrhage, we have subarachnoid hemorrhage. The most common. It occurs due to trauma more than non-traumatic causes like aneurysm and most common one of them is Berry's aneurysm. It is characterized by thunder clap headache. Okay. It is one of the worst headache the person says he suffered in a life. Also in SAH, we see in this image. Okay, we see some of the features that uh, the subarachnoid hematoma spreads along the cisterns and we have enlarged temporal holes. Talking about the intracranial hemorrhage, uh, the vessel implicated is middle cerebral artery and the most common non-traumatic uh, intra intracranial hemorrhage is an intracerebral hemorrhage. The most common site is internal capsule. We see, see this image, we see an intraparenchymal bleed uh, in this CT image. Also uh, remember in intracranial hemorrhage the investigation of choice is NCCT. Also in case of EDH if there is uh, we need to identify where to do craniotomy we look for the pupillary dilation on the side of pupillary direction we are going to do the craniotomy but in case uh, this is done when there is no NCCT available okay but there can be a paradox if there is Karnohan notch phenomena. Hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.